Lawrence, let's go to you. Uh, you've worked at Burger King for nine years. How much do you make an hour, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I've worked in fast food for 17 years and at Burger King for nine years, and I make $9.40 an hour at Burger King. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch what you said. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. I've been working fast food for 17 years, and Burger King I've worked for the past nine years, and I make $9.40 an hour working there. And why are you going on strike today? Well, I'm going on strike for my family. I raised three little girls here in Kansas City, and I need their future not to look anything like the past. We've struggled with homelessness, uh, paying basic utilities, gas, rent, the, the lights. And that's why working every day, the working poor is what we are. Are you concerned about retaliation if you go out today? What has uh, Burger King said? Presumably, since this is or being organized all over the country, Burger King and McDonald's know that uh, workers are going to be walking out. Well, me, I first spoke to you, Amy, in August. That was my first strike, and this is number four for me. So we know that we, the federal laws provide us a protection when we come together as workers and demand the corporations we work for to pay us a living wage and to give us the right to form a union. So with that knowledge of knowing that the federal government protects our rights to organize and go on strike, it's, it's a huge relief for fast food workers. Terrence, how many hours a week do you work at Burger King? Between 35, 40 hours a week. And your take-home pay? Well, it's—I make $9.40 an hour, so it's like 35, 40 hours a week. It's after taxes, maybe $400 every two weeks. And that's working double sometimes, going in in the morning and working at night, just not bringing in enough. And we know that these companies make billions in profit. They can afford to pay us better and do better by us and give us a voice on the job. Well, That's what we're demanding. Catherine Rutschlin, you've been studying this, the issue of what these fast food companies can afford. Your report, Fast Food Failure, How CEO to Worker Pay Disparity Undermines the Industry and the Overall Economy. What is the disparity between the CEO, say, of Burger King and the workers or McDonald's? Well, you know, when I started the study, I didn't know that fast food was going to be such an extreme outlier in terms of pay disparity. The study arose kind of in this context that, that Terrence and other workers like him have created, where there's a growing awareness that inequality is undermining the economy at several levels. Um, but when I dug into the data, what I found was that fast food is a catalyst with inequality that outstrips all the sectors of the economy. Uh, the CEO of a fast food company in 2012 earned 12 1,200 times what the typical worker earned that year. 1,200 times. 1,200 times. And that's with a fairly generous assumption that workers in fast food are receiving benefits and work a full-time schedule, which in many cases, you know, isn't true. How does that affect the industry and the economy as a whole? You say it hurts it. That's right. You know, there's a macro level story that's just become a uh, part of the conversation with organizations like the IMF and the World Economic Forum in Davos pointing to inequality as a threat at the macro level because it generates instability in the economy and undermines growth. But then at the micro level, firms are starting to wake up to the fact that it undermines their bottom lines as well. Uh, in March, McDonald's filed with the SEC and listed income inequality as one of the primary risks facing their own returns over the coming years, not just because workers are striking, but because they're having a hard time satisfying their customers because they've underinvested in the frontline services that really build the brand and provide revenue. How do you to respond firm? to the company saying, all right, if they increase the workers' wages, but then consumers have to be willing to pay more for the burgers? Well, firms have a lot of ways that they can pay for a raise. They don't necessarily have to pass the cost on to customers. They could do that, but they could also use some of the ways that they're redirecting their profits right now. Uh, firms like McDonald's spend billions of dollars a year buying back their own shares of company stock on the market in order to consolidate ownership and bump up earnings per share and meet these short-term benchmarks. But that's really a short-term understanding of the, of the, the um, 
the interest of the firm, right? If they had a longer-term perspective, they would see that rather than investing in their share price, if they were investing in their labor force, they would generate returns, higher productivity, loyal, loyal workers with better knowledge of the company processes, you know, lower turnover rates, so lower costs associated with job search, and they would actually receive benefits through that investment that would pay off in the long run. Um, and the issue of how these companies are subsidized, government subsidized. That's right. A study came out recently that shows that fast food employers like McDonald's, Subway, you know, Yum Brands, which owns Taco Bell and KFC and Pizza Hut, Domino's Pizza, these are some of the highest ranking employers in terms of working poor. So if you can, if you look into who's receiving health care benefits for their families and, um, and wage subsidies um, from this, from the state agencies, from poverty alleviation programs, the highest ranking firms are Walmart and fast food. So it's the taxpayers who are actually paying the, uh, for the ability for these firms to maintain a labor force at all. Uh, Terrence, how does it feel um, to <laughs> learn that the CEO uh, uh, makes something like 1,200 times more than what you make? Well, I know that workers like myself and my coworkers across the city, we go to work every day, and we're the driving force behind his billions in profit he brings in. He's buying new yachts and new boats and new cars, and I just want to put my kids through college. So just to see the disparity that he, I'm making 950 an hour and he makes over 9000 and that just to get that out to the public and and that information to be known it's 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 eye opening and it's a cause for change and and Terrence the action you're going to engage in today in Kansas City what exactly are you going to do well, like I said earlier, this is my fourth time, and I'll band together with the majority of the co-workers at my store and hundreds of workers from around the city, and we'll, we'll go different parts of the city, we'll do chants, we'll hold signs, we'll give speak-outs, we'll try to enter some stores, like I heard them say on New York earlier. Uh, in New York City, they've been doing this, and we'll be doing this here in Kansas City. It's just to get the message out to the public and to our bosses and the companies that we're not afraid, we're going to stand together in solidarity, and we demand better. We're not asking for a minimum wage increase. It's not a minimum wage drive. It's for billion-dollar corporations that have the money to pay us better and give us the right to have a union in this industry. Well, Terrence Wise, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Burger King worker on strike today, um, part of Stand Up Kansas City, speaking to us from Kansas City Public Television. And Catherine Rutschlin, one more thing. Uh, not only the issue of the pay ratio of work to CEO 1,200 uh, to one, CEO, of course, being the 1,200. But the fast food CEO's earnings quadrupling That's right. compared to what? with the workers. That's right. What we've seen is that at these firms that have benefited from economic growth overall, the CEOs and top executives have been able to capture all of those gains. So while the fast food CEO pay grew by 470 percent since 2000, worker earnings only grew by 0.3 percent. Now, that means that their earnings aren't even keeping up with the basic cost of living. So they're actually losing ground in terms of standard of living year after year.